This week we'll be looking at the creative practice of processing and colouring sound using plug-in effects in our digital audio workstation. Okay, so firstly I'm going to demonstrate the time delay based effect echo. There's one critical thing I need to do when I'm demonstrating any kind of time delay effect because when I apply a time delay effect it increases the length of the sound. So I need somewhere for that extra length to go. In the case of Audacity it won't simply just create those extra parts of the sound and put them onto the existing sound. I need somewhere for that to go. So I actually need to create some silence. So to do this, the first thing I do is double click, then I go to edit, and then I go move cursor to selection end. I'm now going to insert some silence. Now the cursor is all the way down here and that's where the silence is going to go. So I'll go generate, silence, let's make it say 10 seconds, and click OK. Now we can't see that completely, so let's zoom out again. So we'll go fit to window or fit in window. And there it is. Okay, so we've got a short, sharp sound at the beginning and then silence. So let's have a listen. Okay, and you can see the cursor move across there into silence. Okay, so now that I have my silence, let's apply the echo effect to the sound. I select the whole sound, go to effect, echo, and I'm going to set my delay time in seconds to 0.25 seconds or 250 milliseconds and my decay factor to about 0.75. So that means it'll decay that factor over the range of the sound. Let's click OK. And you can see quite visibly there are echoes of the original sound decreasing in amplitude in a factor of 0.75. Let's have a listen. Okay, that's pretty good. It's probably a little bit too long, so what I'll do is I'm just going to snip it here. I'll select this portion, I'll go to Edit, and I'll go Remove Special, Trim Audio. I'm now just going to add a slight fade out at the end. Let's have another listen. Okay, let's export this as an audio file. Microsoft Wave 24-bit. We don't need any metadata, and we're done. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate another time delay effect called Reverb. Reverb is basically the process of taking a space, or the colour of a space, and applying it to a sound, so that that sound sounds like it's being played in a particular room, whether it be a bathroom, concert hall, outdoors, or even a stairwell. So I've got my drone tone sound from my previous video and you can see it's got quite a bit of trailing silence and you'll remember from the echo video that I actually needed to include trailing silence. I'm actually going to need a bit more than this. It's only about three or four seconds. I'm actually going to make the reverb go longer. So again, I'll go edit, move cursor to selection end. So you'll see the cursor's moved down here. I'm now going to generate some silence. About 10 seconds again, click OK. We can't see that, so I'll zoom out. Okay, let's select all of the sound. I'm now going to go to Effect, Reverb, and I've got a number of different settings. For example, room size, the size of the room, pre-delay the time before which the reverb kicks in, the overall reverberance of the room, and a number of other options that you can explore and read about further in the manual. The key thing here is I want it to sound kind of metallic and long. So let's just bring up the pre-delay a little bit, the room size a little bit. I'll, I'll tail off the reverberance and let's preview. You may have noticed before we haven't previewed our effects but in this case we can preview it before we apply it or bake it in as they call. That sounds pretty nice so I'm going to apply it and you'll see that the sound has changed. Let's have a listen to it as it's been processed. Probably the only thing that's a bit of a worry or a concern is the fact that the amplitude's gone down a bit. So let's go to effect. Let's normalize it. Again, minus one. 
as we've done previously when cleaning up our sounds and click OK. Now let's have another listen. OK, so that sounds pretty good to me. Let's trim it down, I don't need all of it. Move it a little bit to the beginning. Let's just fade out the end again. Have one final listen. And we're done. Now that we have explored effects that change the space of sound, namely reverb and echo, let's look at some other ways we can manipulate the sound. OK, I'm going to demonstrate changing the pitch of a sound. I've got a recording here of me doing the roar of a monster or a lion. It's pretty scary. Let's have a listen. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do is go to Effect, Change Pitch. And I'm going to take it down 12 semitones or musical half steps. Let's click OK and have a listen. Much scarier. All right, let's export it out. Make sure it's wave, 24-bit, save. Click OK. I'm actually now going to undo that effect and I'm going to make my voice go higher in pitch. So I'm going to go back to effect, go change pitch, and I'm going to make it go up 12 semitones or musical half steps and click OK. I like the sound of that, it's kind of like an alien voice. Again, I'll export. Microsoft Wave 24-bit, save. We don't need the metadata. And I'm done. That covers the basic practical steps of using effects to process and colour sound, which you'll be using in future creative activities. I hope this has given you some ideas for creating new and diverse sounds.